I really don't like paint. Aside from paint being made of toxic chemicals and not being biodegradable, painting a house is a losing endeavor because inevitably the paint will begin to chip and peel and you'll have to scrape and repaint the house. In this video, I'm going to show you a better, more natural option for wood siding protection. So stick around. This is Wisteria Lodge. Many years ago, I moved the shell of this house to Dancing Rabbit Eco Village, where I live a hardcore sustainable life, and I've been renting it out for several years. It's sided with reclaimed barn siding. For close to 15 years, the siding has been unprotected. It's held up pretty well, thanks in part to large overhangs on the roof. But recently, I've been wanting to restore some life to the building. But I didn't want to paint it, as I've said, so I decided to treat it with a natural wood pigment protector. This method I'm going to talk about doesn't peel with time, and it allows the beautiful wood grain to show through. It also protects the wood from decay and insect boring, especially if you add borax to the mixture. You might have to reapply the treatment after many years to renew it, but you won't have to scrape the old stuff off. This paint, which is essentially a stain, can easily be mixed up from a few basic ingredients and will protect as good as any paint. It consists of raw linseed oil, turpentine, and earth pigment powder. This mixture is basically what oil paints used by fine art painters consist of. Turpentine is used as a thinner, raw linseed oil as the oil base, and earth pigments as the color. But you could look at this as a thinned down version of oil paints, having less pigment and more of the turpentine solvent, or paint thinner. The pigment I'm using is just red ochre. This is basically ground up rock, so the pigment will never fade. The oil interacts with it and sticks it to the wood surface. I haven't found a recipe, but I suspect you could also add some borax to this mixture to make the wood even more unfriendly to mold, mildew, fungus, and insect pests. You could also pre-treat the wood with a borax treatment and then put this over it. I put just one coat on this time. You could put an additional coat on or add coats in future years to extend the protection of the wood, but you won't ever have to scrape anything off. So in making up our pigmented wood treatment, we've got a few basic ingredients. This is pure raw linseed oil. You can also use boiled linseed oil. Boiled linseed oil already has a solvent in it. Boiled linseed oil is a completely different product. It contains petroleum-based solvents to thin the oil and speed drying. If you were using that, you wouldn't need to add turpentine. But we want the raw, pure stuff, which will have a smaller carbon footprint, not needing to be heated to such high temperatures for so long. Turpentine is the solvent we're using to thin the raw linseed oil and help it to penetrate further into the wood, protecting it more deeply. Turpentine is manufactured by collecting sap, also called resin, from living pine trees and distilling it. These are old pictures of the process as it used to be made in the southern U.S. Cuts are made in the bark of the pine tree and the resin oozes out and is collected. The resin is heated and a solvent, the turpentine, is distilled from it. It can also be made from chopped up wood that has been heated in the same way. Before the advent of petroleum solvents, turpentine was used extensively and was produced in the United States. So this is like the original product. And that's what I like to use because I think it's more natural. It does have terpenes in it. It's got stuff in it that's toxic, but at least it's derived from pine trees and not from fossil fuel. And then our last ingredient is our earthen pigment powder. And so this is just a, a red ochre. And this stuff is pretty easily, easily purchased online. Um, I go to earthpigments.com to get my pigments. And then we've got the container. This is what I'm using. I like to use something like this because it's got a handle on it um, to mix up the um, wood treatment and, and, and then just a, uh, a regular paintbrush of some kind. This is not, this is kind of less than ideal. This is a pretty cheap paintbrush, but I wanted to get some stuff done and this is what I had now. I don't live near a hardware store, store, so it can be hard to get stuff just like quickly. Uh, the nearest hardware store is about 13 miles away. So, we're just gonna mix up 
a batch of this stuff. And I've been doing a double batch um, just because it gives me a lot more to uh, start with. And I'm gonna start by putting the pigment in container. Since this is double batch, I'm doing four teaspoons and uh, one tablespoon is three teaspoons. So I'm doing one tablespoon and then about a third of a tablespoon. And we're putting that in first. And then we're gonna drop, this is uh, the turpentine, the solvent. And so we're gonna put two thirds of a cup to one cup of raw linseed oil. That's gonna be our proportions. And since we're doing a double batch, this'll be um, one cup and a third. So I'll put four of these third cups in here. I don't know why I'm using a third of a cup. This was the only like kind of waste measuring cup that I happen to have sitting around. So I'm not doing it the most efficient way. I don't actually know if this is the right color for this turpentine. This turpentine is pretty old. It's been sitting in my shed. We're just gonna put two of these in for now, and then we're gonna mix it up. Um, because what we wanna do is make sure that that, uh, that pigment gets mixed into the solvent thoroughly before we add the rest of the liquid because if we just add too much liquid at once, it's going to end up in clumps and clods. So we're starting with a small amount of liquid and making sure that our pigment powder gets thoroughly mixed into that. And then when we go to add more of the liquid, um, it'll just dilute the pigment. And we won't have any chunks in there. So we wanna make sure that pigment is well distributed. So I put two of those in and I wanted four. two cups of the raw linseed oil in the double batch. So we got one, oops, that was not very neat. Let me move this paint brush out of the way. Three, four, five, Raw linseed oil is perfectly natural. It should not contain anything but oil from the flax plant. <clears throat> it's perfectly biodegradable and you could eat it. Many people do and it's called flaxseed oil. Okay, so we got everything added in there and now we're just gonna stir it around the rest of the way. We should be ready to go. Pretty much all there is to it. Not not super complicated. And as you do this, you're gonna wanna keep on mixing up your wood treatment so that uh, that earth pigment stays pretty well distributed because it will it's like a solid, it's basically like ground up rock powder. So it will settle and it'll all sink to the bottom and then you'll end up with, you know, the end of your paint is going to be pretty pigmented and so it's gonna be a lot darker and deeper red color than what, when you start, if you're not mixing it up as you go along. So just as you, as you're painting, make a habit of mixing up your wood treatment. I put just one coat on this time. 
You could put an additional coat on or add coats in future years to extend the protection of the wood, but you won't ever have to scrape anything off. Think the pigment makes what was a mottled natural wood look into a more uniform look. Even with stain on, the wood will eventually show weathering and differential coloring, but you can always apply another coat then. I haven't done it with wisteria, but you could always apply different pigments to the trim for accents or apply a different pigment on top of the first coat in different spots to add accents. This is another building at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village that has used a similar wood treatment, though I believe these were pre-mixed products with similar ingredients. It didn't take long to transform this building. If you're having tenants or guests or you plan to stay in the building, you should probably give sufficient time for the treatment to dry and stop off-gassing because terpenes are not good to be breathing. In a couple of weeks, most of the off-gassing should be done and you should be able to inhabit the building without any ill effects. Doing the application in warmer weather will also aid in quicker drying time, so try not to do the application in cooler seasons. So there it is, another more sustainable solution that doesn't require as much fossil fuel input. Look for the recipe in the description below. I can't wait to see the wisteria vine in full bloom next spring with the new rust red background. It's gonna look incredible. This is Hardcore Sustainable, a channel about my life in a radical eco-village where we're showing people that sustainable living on a community scale is possible. With simple lifestyle changes, we've reduced our impact on the planet by 90%. Check out my other videos to see how. Share and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, one great boon to my channel is the recent addition of patrons who support me every time I post a video. This helps fund the creation of more videos and improvements to my production value. You can add your name to this list of patrons and have my never-ending appreciation for keeping this channel going to influence and educate thousands of people to a more sustainable and meaningful way of life. Also check out the Facebook and Instagram pages for more regular posts. Hey, Hardcore Sustainable has reached another milestone of 40,000 subscribers, and I have all of you to thank for your support of my channel over the years. Thank you for watching my videos and being inspired and also inspiring me with your comments and encouragement.